us on today's episode of Alabama STEM Explorers. I'm Dr. Lanier. And I'm Anderson Blunt. And today, Anderson and I are going to be exploring the properties of gases. And we're going to take a look at some pretty cool phase changes. Hey, Anderson, tell me, what's the coldest or the coolest thing you can think of? And I'm not talking about myself. I know I am pretty cool. Um, a popsicle, snow. Oh, I know, dry ice and liquid nitrogen. Yes, those are really cold. Do you want to chill, Dr. Lanier? <laughs> you bet I do. We are coming to you from the STEM lab at Southern Research in Birmingham, Alabama, where the weather is hot, but the science is so, so cool. And Anderson, you're in luck. I've got some dry ice and liquid nitrogen right over there. Really? Let's go check it out. What even is dry ice? How can ice be dry? That's a great question, Anderson. So dry ice is really just frozen gas. It's frozen carbon dioxide. And you know a little bit about carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, isn't that what we breathe out? That's exactly right. And the cool thing about dry ice and really where it gets its name from is that dry ice never changes into a liquid at atmospheric pressure. It just goes straight from a solid to a gas. And you can sort of see that a little bit here, but you know what, Anderson, why don't you do the following thing? Why don't you pick up some of these dry ice pellets and throw it into, uh, into these cylinders? Oh, okay. And all this is, this is just some water and I added some food coloring to sort of make it pretty. And you could just, yeah, go to town, throw some in. There you go. And so this gives you a better idea of how much gas is really coming off. Because the thing about dry ice, you can't see carbon dioxide gas. Uh, because it's invisible, right? But whenever you put it into the water, you can really see how much gas is coming off. This is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm just gonna move these right out of the way and I've got another experiment that'll help show you this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this balloon open okay. and you're gonna take some dry ice and you're just gonna stick it right inside the balloon. Yeah, they're pretty slippery, they'll get away from you. There you go, perfect. Good job. You can add a few more in there. Perfect, one more. Great job. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this balloon and I'm gonna tie it off. And what I want you to do, Anderson, is I want you to take this balloon and I want you to give it a good shake. Shake it as hard as you can. Okay. All right, and keep on going, don't be shy, perfect. So if this dry ice is really frozen gas, what should happen is our, our balloon should totally fill up with gas, right? It should fill up with just carbon dioxide. So take a little sneak peek. Whoa. Yeah, it's blowing up, right? That's so cool, and it's gonna continue to sublimate. Have you heard of sublimate before? Um, I don't think so. So sublimate is just when a substance goes from a solid to a gas without going through the liquid state. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So you can keep on shaking, and that balloon is eventually gonna get really big. But hey, Anderson, you said that you thought of something that was even colder than dry ice, right? Yeah. Which was? Liquid, liquid nitrogen. nitrogen. Yes, I've got some right over here. Let's go get it. Oh, okay. So you thought the dry ice was cold. It's about negative 78 degrees Celsius. Liquid nitrogen is even colder. It's negative 196 degrees Celsius. That's really cold. Yeah, it's freezing or below freezing. And so what I have here, Anderson, is I have some beautiful flowers just for you. Take a look, see that they're real, give them a good smell. Don't they smell delicious? <laughs> yeah, okay, so what I want you to do, so the cool thing about liquid nitrogen, it's really kind of just like liquid air. So most of the air that we breathe is nitrogen, about 79% or so. And so when that air gets really, really cold, the nitrogen turns into liquid nitrogen. I mean, it doesn't get this cold anywhere, but that's what would happen. And so what I want you to do with the flowers is I want you to give them a good dunk inside the liquid nitrogen. Okay. Do you see that? Yeah, so whenever you put those flowers inside of the liquid nitrogen, the liquid nitrogen starts boiling. And the reason for that is because compared to the liquid nitrogen, these flowers are on fire. So just like how you put a pot of water on a stove and it starts to boil, that's exactly what's happening here. All right, you can stick them a little bit further in there. Yeah, we want to cook them really good. All right, so now pull them out. All right, and I will take this right here. And now what I want you to do is I want you to give it a good squeeze. Perfect, now just let it go. Oh. Yeah, it is really cold, so it has totally frozen these flowers, and that is why you never want to stick your hand in liquid nitrogen. Pretty self-explanatory, am I right? Yeah. All right, Anderson, so we saw what happens when you put the flowers inside the liquid nitrogen, but I have some balloons right here. What do you say we blow some up and give them a dunk? 
Okay, let's do it. That's pretty good. Okay, so now we have our balloons blown up. And so first we've got to put on our gloves, right? Because this is super cold, safety first. And so Anderson, tell me, what do you think is gonna happen whenever I dunk the balloon inside of the liquid nitrogen? I think it might explode. Yeah, maybe. A lot of people think it's gonna pop. Well, the cool thing about science and scientists is when we don't know the answer, we just do the experiment. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Cover your ears. Is it popping? No. It's not popping. What's happening? It's, huh. It looks like it's deflating. It is deflating. It, yeah, it's shrinking. It's totally shrinking. Wow. And I will pull this balloon out so you can see it a little bit better. Check it out. There is no more air inside of the balloon. Where did it go? Uh, in the air? Do you think that there's a hole in the balloon? Yes. Yeah, maybe there's a hole. So what do you think is going to happen when I pull the balloon back out? Um... It'll cool right. off? Maybe. Okay, maybe it'll pop them. Well, let's just do it. Let's check it out. Are you ready? All right, check it out. It's a beautiful cloud. Now, what's happening to the balloon? It's blowing back up. It is blowing back up. Holy cow, why does that happen? I'll tell you. Okay, well, so think about it. So, like, when gases get really, really cold, what do they do? They want to get really, really close together, right? Right. And then as gases warm up, they want to expand. And so when we put this balloon inside of the liquid nitrogen, those gas molecules were freezing. And so they're going to kind of get, they're going to try to get as close together as possible. You pull it out. Now they're hot. They want to expand and the balloon blows back up. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, Anderson. So we saw the pink balloon, but I also have a clear balloon here. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stick it in the liquid nitrogen, and of course, it's gonna deflate, right, just like before, but this time when I pull it out of the liquid nitrogen, I want you to look really, really closely at what is inside, and I want you to tell me what you see. All right, you ready? Look at the bottom of the balloon. What do you see? Liquid? That's a liquid. What do you think that could be? Did you spit in it? No, I didn't spit in there. You saw me blow it up. So if I didn't spit, what could it be? So think about it, what gases are in the air? Because it's gotta be something that's in the air, right? Right, um, maybe water vapor? Water vapor, that's a really good idea. But think about water vapor. So what happens to water when it gets really, really cold? It freezes. It freezes into ice, right? Which is a solid, but that was definitely a liquid. So could not be water vapor. What else do you, what else is in the air? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, that's great, because that when I blow it up, that's what I exhale. Great hypothesis. And I have just the experiment to test that out. Do you remember that green uh, carbon dioxide balloon we blew up from the dry ice? Yeah. All right, go grab it. Okay, so if you remember this, I know it's totally inflated. So if you remember the only gas that is inside this balloon is carbon dioxide, right? Because it went from the dry ice, which is solid CO2, to carbon dioxide. So let's give this a good dunk. And if that liquid inside of our clear balloon was really carbon dioxide, this should, we should see a liquid inside this balloon too, right? Right. All right, so it is deflated. Now I'm gonna pull it out and I want you to tell me what you see. All right, do you see any liquid in there? Um, I don't think so. No, it, it, there's no liquid. You know what? This is just dry ice. It is a sheet of dry ice. Here, check it out. You can feel it. Because what happens to carbon dioxide when it gets really, really cold? It, it, <laughs> it turns into dry ice, right, exactly. So it's not carbon dioxide. And so the gases that are left, you have a little bit of argon, nitrogen, because nitrogen, that's about 79% of the air we breathe, and oxygen. And it turns out that the liquid inside of this balloon is a combination of liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Very cool. Dr. Lanier, what is all this smoke? That's a good question. So it's not really smoke, Anderson. It's more of a cloud. And you know what? I have the perfect experiment that can show you. We'll make a little miniature, pretty cool cloud. All right. So what I have here is I have a flask of hot water. Okay. All right. And what I want you to do, Anderson, is I want you to hold it really tight, just like that. All right. And we're going to point it like that. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of this liquid nitrogen and I'm going to pour it in. And we are going to make a cloud because what happens, here we go, we'll give it a good pour. Whoa. All right, there you go. Perfect. And check it out. Look at this cloud. And you can kind of breathe it in. It really is just a cloud. Doesn't that feel nice? It's exfoliating. It nice. Yeah, it's very cool. So what's happening is that like when we uh, this liquid nitrogen is coming in contact with this water, the water vapors cool down and they condense, and that is what makes a cloud. Isn't this very cool? So and we cool. can just do this all day long. We could just keep adding liquid nitrogen, and it's just gonna make a beautiful, beautiful cloud. How neat is this? All right, yes, this is a pretty cool cloud, but I say let's do this on an even bigger scale. What do you think? Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, so you saw that small cloud that we created earlier, but we're gonna make an even bigger one. So what I have down here is I have a bucket of liquid nitrogen, and then I have some hot water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dump the hot water inside of the liquid nitrogen, and it's gonna go boom, and we're gonna have an awesome cloud. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, safety first. Here we go. Can I get a three, two, one? <laughs> this is so cool. This is awesome. Yes. This is the best cloud we've ever done. How cool is that? This is awesome. <laughs> cool. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of Alabama Sim Explorers. I was going to leave you with a really cool science pun, but all the gas ones are, are gone. Until later, see you next time and stay cool.